Hi everybody, this is Steve Ludwig, host of Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture and The Beatles Hour with Steve Ludwig at planetludwig.com. Here's an interview we did with Vince Martell of Vanilla Fudge on July 1st, 2014. It's from show number 47. To hear the entire show, check out the menu at planetludwig.com. And now, please enjoy the interview. The number four guitar riff of all time, says Guitar Magazine, of our next guest, the legendary Vince Martell joins us. Mr. Martell, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Thanks for having me on. Oh, it is it is a pleasure. I'm a first generation vanilla fudge fan, so I can't tell you what a thrill it is to speak with you. Um the late Ray Ray Manzarek said of you, a more soulful shredder may not exist in all of classic rock. Uh have you always when did you start playing the guitar, Vince? Oh, I started very early on. I started like around when I was small, maybe around eight years old, something like that. And did did you grow up in a musical family? Yes, I did. Uh, everybody in the family played music, all the relatives, and uh, so I grew up, uh, you know, thinking everybody played, and then as I got older, I realized most people didn't, <laughs> but uh, I stuck with it. Yeah, it was, it was great. I had, like, my folks made me take lessons, uh, and uh, so it was just uh, it was a great thing. I'm, I'm really appreciative. Well, certainly, um, you said you, you thought everyone played and you found out that everyone didn't. Certainly not many people play like you do, Vince. And uh, since the 60s, I've been a fan, and uh, you just you just get better and better and better, I mean, with your solo CDs. And now you and two other original members of Vanilla Fudge are going to uh, embark on the Rock and Blues Fest 2014 tour. Uh, coming up. It starts at the end of July. Yeah. You're going to be with uh, Johnny and Edgar Winter and Kim Simmons of Savoy Brown. Um, must feel good to get back with the guys of, of Vanilla Fudge with, uh, oh, with Carmen. Sure. And, yeah. Sure, Carmen and Mark. And uh, yeah. Yeah, t- to me, I uh, decided to retire uh, for, for a while. And uh, so we uh, are doing it without him, but uh, uh, he'll be missed. But uh, with, with uh, you know, we'll have a lot of fun doing it, uh, and in fact, we're working on a new CD right now for Cleopatra Records, uh, so we're in the studio doing that also, so we're, it's, you know, it's, it's been uh, good. Um, uh, we have sort of a mutual friend, um, Billy Sample, a former baseball player, uh, the gentleman, I think Tom, who's producing this album coming up, uh, he also produced the soundtrack for Billy Sample's movie. Uh, Billy shared a picture of me with you guys in the studio, and uh, I just thought it was kind of a kind of a karmic thing. Uh, Billy Sample said he was uh, he was a big fan of your guys too. You guys too, growing up in the sixties. Um, we're speaking with Vince Martell, everyone. Go to VanillaFudge.com and also VinceMartell.com. Before we go any further, Vince, I want to thank our mutual friend, uh, Tommy Marr, for setting up this interview. And uh, Tommy's a pretty cool guy, isn't he, Vince? Well, Tom's a great guy. I think we're going to be doing his show again this, uh, this Sunday, uh, July 6th. Uh, yep. Again, we've done it a few times. And, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great patriot. He uh, loves doing stuff for the veterans, of uh, which I'm a big fan of that also. And uh, d- definitely a great guy. Yeah, that's uh, this Sunday, the Maverick Soul Hour. The one and only Vince Martell will be on Tommy Mar- uh, Tommy Mars Maverick Soul Hour. Just go to MadhouseTV.net and uh, check out Vince on Tommy's show this Sunday. Uh, Vince, my dad was uh, in the Navy. He served during World War II and the Korean conflict. And I just wanted to thank you as a U.S. Navy veteran for your service to the country as well. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I was uh, in the Cuban crisis, actually. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I thank all the vets for everything that they uh, have uh, uh, participated to keep us free in the USA and to the beacon of freedom around the world also, uh, the USA. And uh, I'd like to see everybody, uh, uh, you know, appreciate the veterans. I don't like to see them getting a, any kind of a raw deal. Uh, and also, for people who are interested, uh, I did a documentary called Rock in the Wall, and it's how Radio Free Europe uh, contributed with uh, rock and roll, the Beatles, uh, us, uh, and many, many groups, 
uh, to topple the, uh, the Berlin Wall in 1989. So they could check that out at uh, rockinthewall.com, R-O-C-K-I-N, thewall.com. And it's really something how a lot of people do- take for granted freedom that we are given in this great country of ours. Uh, people should uh, t- check it out because everybody didn't have that back then. People had yeah. to escape. It was pretty, pretty uh, uh, her- harrowing. PBS.org, rockinthewall.com, rock mm-hmm. and uh, it's, uh, it was on the PBS, <clears throat> excuse me, special, PBS.org. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, everyone check that out, rockinthewall.com. It was a PBS special. I'm, I'm going to uh, definitely check it out. Um, my dad, um, he was a resident at the Paramus uh, Veterans Home. He passed a couple of months ago. but. Um, that. Yeah, well, thanks. He he lived a good life. He, he was uh, thankfully. Right. Um, but I I just want to say, you know, there's there's been a lot of um, negative um, news about the veterans' hospitals. Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you that the veterans' home, at least, they took great care of my dad. And uh, there is some negative publicity going on with the hospitals, and of course, we have we hope that that improves. But as far as the veterans' home go, I just wanted to uh say in public that they really treated my dad well and I wanted to thank them for that. But anyway, oh, that's good for you. Good for yeah. you. No, that, that, <laughs> excuse me. No, that's good that you're mentioning that because there's a lot of great people that work uh in behalf of the vets and uh, I uh, uh am involved with the uh, the vets uh, uh the hospital down here in uh uh Wilmington, Delaware. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're very good down there also. There's a lot of, like I said, a lot of good people. I'm also involved with Three Hops in a Cot, which is a, a group out of uh, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, run by J.D. Simpson. And uh, people who want to check out that, they get uh, veterans off the street that uh, are homeless. They get homes to them. And I've gone down with uh, a couple of different bands that I'm involved with, and we played to uh, help to raise money and uh, bring awareness. Uh, they could check out cots for vets dot org c o t s f o r v e t s dot org and should be no homeless vets. They should, the, the, the veterans have given us our freedom. So if anybody uh, you know uh, d- deserves uh, 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 a helping uh, hand when they need us, that uh, you know we should be there to, to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since I, it's almost, I know I'm preaching to the choir with this, but it's almost inconceivable that every single one of our vets is not taken care of. I mean, we are here because of them. We have our freedom because of it. them, and and they're so forgotten. Not not all of them, of course, but you know what I'm saying. It's just there's just not enough done for our vets. I feel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I well, I, I I don't feel like they're, they're forgotten, but I feel like the the, uh, the media doesn't. Uh, uh, of, you know, make people more aware, even in the schools. I mean, uh, make the kids aware of uh, how, why we have freedom in this country to rock and roll and everything else. And again, I feel we're the beacon of freedom uh, around the world. Uh, the U.S. stands for freedom. And got, we have to stay strong and we have to teach our history to the kids in the school. Mm-hmm. So there's, uh, there's just a lot of things. But God bless those people that are standing strong for them. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and, and once again, everyone, as as Vince mentioned, go to cotsforvets.org, C-O-T-S-F-O-R-V-E-T-S.org, and also check out rockinthewall.com, R-O-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-W-A-L-L.com. Check those things out as well. Uh, this may seem like a silly question to you, Vince, but does did vanilla fudge mean white soul, or was it just about the ice cream? <laughs> Okay, I, I, give, me that, give me that question again. What was that? I, when, in the 60s, late 60s, yeah. uh, a bunch of my friends and I had heard that Vanilla Fudge really stood for white soul. Were we reading into things or was it just about the ice cream for the name? Uh, it wasn't about the – actually, it wasn't really about the ice cream. It was uh, a blue-eyed soul type of a thing, white guys doing uh, music with a black uh, edge to it, mm-hmm. uh, if you will, and uh, – you know, and uh, so that's uh, that, that's true. That it wasn't uh, just about ice cream. It just okay. so happened, yeah. That uh, in fact, the girl thought of it uh, from uh, a group called the Unspoken Word. Used to rehearse at uh, our manager's club in Long Island, the Action House in uh, Oceanside in Island Park, right next to Oceanside. And we were thinking of a name. We were going through a lot of names for a while because we thought that we were the pigeons before uh, we were the vanilla fudge. And they given it to us by a fellow named Jeff Barry, uh, mogul in the uh, business. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, 
okay. And uh, so we were the pigeons, and then we were looking for a different name, and she came walking in with ice cream, and that was her nickname, was Vanilla Fudge, that her grandfather had named her. <laughs> so she's eating ice cream. She hears us talking, and she says, what about Vanilla Fudge? And everybody just like kind of thought about it, and uh, everything stood still for a second, and uh, that's how that uh, came about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and well, it's it's, it's definitely it definitely works with the blue white soul as well. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, as the pigeons, uh, Vince, you guys played with um, groups called the Hassles, the Vagrants, the Sparrows, who later, of course, Billy Joel, Mountain, Steppenwolf. Isn't it uh, you guys? Isn't it something how you, the 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 trail leads back, and it's kind of like a, not to borrow a title of a song, but it is kind of a long and winding road, isn't it? Through it all. Oh, sure it is. Yeah, it's a small world. There was a big Long Island sound going on with all the groups that uh, you mentioned. We did uh, a place called My House out in Long Island with, uh, when Billy Joe was with the Hassles. Uh, Leslie West was with the Vagrants. They were, <coughs> excuse me, uh, influential uh, with the Fudge. They were the biggest group in New York at the time, unsigned. Uh, a fellow named uh, Frank Scalaro was managing them, and uh, we... Uh, um, you know, saw their act and the Rascals. <clears throat> the Rascals were making a lot of noise at the time. They already had their hits out. Uh, so we borrowed from everybody uh, and, uh, and some of the other groups you mentioned also. So, yes, it does all, you know, it is a long and winding road. You're right. Mm. What was so great about, what is so great about Vanilla Fudge, I mean, the way you, you, you took songs that we are many people were familiar with yet you did the rearrangements of them and it, it gave the songs a different life uh, what what gave you the idea to just to do that uh, it's probably a simple stupid layman's question but you know I'm, there are yeah, so many songs question. that you have made there, you, there's so many songs that you've made your own that were familiar before you guys did them but when you were rearranged them they just became different songs and so much uh like it's just a completely different life to these songs. I'm thinking of songs like, you know, You Keep Me Hanging On and Eleanor Rigby and Ticket to Ride and all these songs. That was, it's such a great, great, such a great trip listening to Vanilla Fudge do those type of songs. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what happened was that uh, we were doing a lot of uh, R&B stuff when we were playing at a place called the Choo Choo Club in uh Lodi, New Jersey, which is where the Rascals started out and the, mm -hmm. the Vagrants and, and many groups uh, started out. And uh, so that was what was called for. But then when we ran into our, our uh, manager and uh, we were asked to, to you know, come up with some uh, uh, different arrangements, that, that's when we decided to uh, slow things down, uh, try to get the most soul and emotion out of every note. Uh, and uh, uh, we coined it the psychedelic symphonic rock uh, because we did have classical influences mm -hmm. uh, along with East Indian influ influences, uh, Rabbi Shankar and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and so that's what we did. We, we wanted to just drag the most emotion out of uh, uh, everything that we possibly could. And that's what uh, what happened. We slowed everything down and tried to make it like it was the nth degree uh, on that particular song, whatever the the meaning was. We just tried to make it as melodramatic as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. And boy, did you ever <laughs> did you ever achieve that, uh, Vince? Did you ever hear from Donovan about what he thought of your season of the Witch cover? Uh, I read something uh, someplace that he liked it. Yes, we uh, mm -hmm. did uh, hear that. And uh, yeah, uh, also the Beatles, uh, uh, we heard that uh, George uh, <clears throat> Harrison used to play our uh, first album, especially with uh, Rigby and Ticket to Write for Everybody That Came to His Castle, that uh, he loved it. Nice. Uh, we did a gig, yeah, we did, um, I think it was the Sable Theater in London, uh, it was us, The Who, and somebody else, and we heard that uh, a couple of the Beatles were in the audience, and they were uh, digging on it, and uh, so uh, yeah, we, you know, Received uh, some really nice uh, uh, accolades from uh, a lot of the biggies in the mm. business. And, and, and well deserved. We're speaking with Thank the legendary you. Vince Martell of, of course, Vanilla Fudge. Um, way back when, Jimi Hendrix actually told you, Vince, that if Vanilla Fudge ever broke up, <laughs> we may have seen, we may have had a Hendrix Martell experience. Tell us about that story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what, what happened is, is uh, we toured 13 dates in a row with uh, the great Jimi Hendrix uh, all over the West uh, Coast. It was uh, with Concerts West, 
And uh, so we flew in the same planes with Jimmy, and uh, we did some uh, talking, and uh, along with uh, you know with uh, Mitch Mitchell and, and all Redding, of course, we were all hanging out uh, to to a degree uh, on the tour. And then uh, what what happened is um, Steve Paul Seen on uh, 46th Street, New York City, uh, would have uh, you know jam sessions there, and they, they were open till four in the morning or so. All the New York clubs. Everybody would gather there and uh, talk and get up and jam and, and like this. Uh, so that's where I, uh, uh, you know, sat down uh, with uh, Jimmy and we were talking. He mentioned that to me. If the fudge ever bro- broke up, to let him know, which was, uh, of course, a great uh, compliment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also we went over, uh, uh, Eddie Kramer was there uh, one night when everybody was there and when they were closing the club at four in the morning and invited everybody to the record plant. Forty uh, Fourth Street. He had the keys, and so everybody went down. There was a whole collection of uh, rock uh, artists, and uh, Buddy Miles was there. I believe Carmine was there, and uh, a bunch of uh, uh, people that uh, followed around, followed the group. Uh, we all went down there. They uh, ran the machines, and uh, Jimmy lets me start uh, the solo, start the whole thing off. So I get into slow blues. So it's just a, a great uh, experience. A great guy. And um, and also I, I'm good friends with uh, Neville Chester. It was oh, the original boy. road match, right? You know him? Yes. Yeah, he was on the show. Yeah, he was on my show. You know, yeah, he's a oh. great guy. And wishing what a great him, guy. Wishing yeah, him a ahead. speedy recovery as well. Yeah, he's back in England and he's uh, yeah. going through some uh, uh, medical uh, things. But uh, what a great guy and uh, what, what a, a beautiful book he should have out. He used to, for the people that don't know, he used to hold the amplifiers behind uh, Jimmy when uh, Jimmy would uh, rush up to the amps with the guitar and uh, get into that whole uh, theatrical thing that he used to do. So <laughs> this guy has that. Uh, plus, he was uh, a road manager for The Who and for Cream and yep. uh, probably some others. So just a great, great guy. Yeah. Speedy uh, recovery. Got yes, it. absolutely. Yeah. Um, your psychedelic symbols, your tribute to Jimi Hendrix. Everyone, go to vincemartel.com. Uh, Vince has his, the solo CD with psychedelic symbols. What, that's, what year was that, Vince? That was 2004, around there? Your psych- yeah, psychedelic right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just decided to do, uh, you know, in honor of uh, the great Jimi Hendrix. I, I, I love the songs. I still perform some of them in my own shows. And, uh, so that's what I try to do is, uh, uh, you know, for, for the veteran stuff, I try to do that. I, I'm, I'm also, if I may mention, good friends with Juma Sultan, who mm-hmm. worked with Jimi Hendrix up at Woodstock uh, playing congas. Uh, he's on the video, and you see there was two conga players and uh, Jimi Hendrix up there, Jerry Velez and uh, Juma Sultan. So uh, Juma oh, okay. and I became good friends, and uh, we, in fact, we did BB Kings with a group that I had put together for a little while called Chocolate Fudge and Rainbows. Right. Uh, with T.M. Stevens, uh, T.C. Tolliver, uh, uh, bass and drums, respectively, and Jumar on Congress and myself. So, mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, so there's, uh, uh, I have, uh, you know, that uh, CD I did uh, with uh, Jimi Hendrix stuff was, uh, by the way, Jimmy, you know, for people that don't know, and probably most people do know, was a veteran. He was in the, uh, yes. in the Army riot. I was up at the Woodstock Museum and I have a picture of Jimmy with his uh, with his uniform on. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I had uh, I, I spoke with Melanie Safka. She was on the show a few months ago, and uh, she was saying that she did uh, Woodstock and the Isle of Wight concert with Jimmy, and she said his stage persona is almost 180 degrees from him off the stage. She said he's one of the most sh- he's very shy, quiet spoken. Did you find that as well, Vince? About Jimmy? Oh, Hendrix? definitely. Definitely peaceful cat, uh, low key, uh, very introspective, uh, just a, a great guy to be around and somebody that you didn't want to do too much talking because he might say something you that, that you, you don't want to miss. So mm. everybody would, uh, yeah, it was really, uh, really like that. A real gentleman and a half. I mean, I can't uh, say more than, uh, than that. It's just mm. a great low key type of a guy until he got up on stage and played and then he blew everybody out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> with Vanilla Fudge, everybody, we're speaking with Vince Martell, lead guitarist, of course, legendary Vince Martell, and Vanilla Fudge's first four albums, all top 20. Uh, also, check out on VinceMartell.com. Vince has excellent solo CDs coming to get you. Psychedelic Symbols we were just talking about. Uh, Vince Martell, lead guitarist of the Vanilla Fudge, 
and Endless High, which uh, I love that. I, I, all your CDs are great, Vince, but I love Endless High. I mean, um, you do killer versions of The Court of the Crimson King and All in Love is Fair, which is a really nice kind of a surprise. Uh, how did you, you choose which songs to put on Endless High CD? Uh, well, that particular song, Well, It's Fair in Love, I uh, just want to put it on because I like uh, Stevie Wonder's, uh, 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 a lot of the stuff that he does, and I just wanted to put my own uh, twist on it, uh, along with the guitar, a little whammy bar I got in there. Uh, we recorded it uh, at Hyperspace Records, uh, a fellow named Randy Pratt, good friend of ours in Long Island that has been uh, a big fan of Vanilla Fudge for many years, uh, helped out on that. Uh, on the, uh, we had, uh, on, uh, uh, we had uh, John Garner from Sir Lord Baltimore on Court of the Crimson King. And, oh, what a, uh, what a cut, Vince, if I may. What a cut that, that beautiful? is. Boy. Oh, you, what a beautiful. great job and, you did. Thank you. And he played the drums on it, too. Uh, and, uh, the two of us actually, we were going to, uh, split the vocal, but after he put his vocal on, it sounded so good. We figured, let's just leave it the way it is. He's like, uh, an operatic uh, vocalist of rock, John Garner. And uh, we had Ian McDonald on the album, uh, playing flute on Court of the Crimson King. Uh, so it was just, uh, you know, a wonderful, uh, you know, what, opportunity. What a great listening experience. Listeners, once again, go to VinceMartel.com. Check out all of Vince's uh, solo CDs, the one we were just speaking about, Endless High and Vince Martel, lead guitarist of the Vanilla Fudge, Psychedelic Symbols, a tribute to Jimi Hendrix, and Coming to Get. Yeah, that's from 2009. Um, Jeff Beck, uh, oh, back in 68, if I have my, uh, my notes correct here, uh, he was to open for the Vanilla Fudge. They canceled, and a little band named Led Zeppelin took his place. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we were touring. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and then years later, in 2007, uh, Vanilla Fudge does Out Through the Indoor. Right. Yeah, what happened is, uh, uh, before a Zeppelin was formed, we did a gig with um, Jimmy Page in Seattle uh, with uh, the Yardbirds uh, when he was with them. And uh, right after that, I guess he went back to England and uh, uh, put together a Zeppelin. Uh, and then the management people all got together and decided to put them on a tour for Concerts West. So we ended up that they opened for us a bunch of gigs out in the West Coast. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. And shortly after that, the fudge kind of, we had to take a break from each other. We were kind of t together and touring to such a degree that, you know, you, you have to really get a little space away from each other. So that was it. In the meantime, the, the powers that be, the, uh, uh, business people got behind and they pushed the heck out of Zeppelin and uh, I don't have to tell everybody how great and how far they went. So uh, we, we had become friends on that tour as we did with Jimmy before that. And uh, so we decided to do an album, uh, you know, and give them a, a little pat on the back, so to speak, uh, you know, a, a friendly, uh, fun project, uh, fudge eyes, some Zeppelin music. And that's what mm -hmm. we did. A, a killer CD, listeners. You have to check out Out Through the Indo and, and all the Vanilla Fudge albums. I mean, before that, we had The Return, Mystery, Rock and Roll, and, of course, the first four, like I said, Beat Goes On, Renaissance, Near the Beginning. Uh, what, a, what a rich, rich history. Um, Vids, I, I, I want to go through these websites again for all of our uh, fans. Uh, check out cotsforvets.org. C O T S F O R V E T S dot org. Uh, Vince Martell is such a uh, a great supporter of our veterans. Also, check out rockinthewall dot com. R O C K I N T H E W A L L dot com. Vanillafudge dot com. Vince Martell dot com. And once again, Vince Mart. Uh, Vince will be on Tommy Mars Maverick Soul Hour this coming Sunday, July sixth. Tommy Mars, great guy, great uh, great show that he has. You'll be on. You're going to be playing some live music or pretty much just talking, Vince? Well, uh, you know, I was going to just do some talking. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure at this point. I might uh, come out uh, with uh, Peg Pearl, uh, and we might do a couple of duo things, which is something else that we do. Uh, and we might do a couple of tunes on that show. But uh, I was just going to do some uh, talking pretty much because mm -hmm. we're leaving for Pol Poland in about a week and a half. We're leaving for Poland. So um, 
we got that. And by the way, if I, uh, I don't want to forget to mention it, that we did, uh, in 07, we did Lovin', a musical celebration. People could check that out. Oh, yes. Com. That's I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mention that. Yes. Right. Lovin', a musical that, celebration. Yep. Right. It, that's also PBS.org. Uh, we did it. We had a, a, a show with uh, Ben Vereen was the uh, moderator. And uh, on that show was uh, Peter and Gordon. Uh, of course, the late uh, Gordon has uh, uh, since uh, departed from yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the, the planet. Uh, Strawberry Alarm Clock was also on that show. Uh, Jesse Colin Young, Eric Johnson, the, the late, great Buddy Miles. Oh, boy. Uh, and it was his birthday, and we had a birthday cake for him and everything. And some other people, Earl Thomas, another singer, and also... A fellow that was like the Ravi Shankar uh, in India of, uh, of current days named Kartik Shahadri. And it was just a, a fantastic thing uh, being out there. And uh, so that's something else that uh, everybody could check out. Loving the musical. Dot com is okay. I know a lot. Thing. I know a lot of these events are also on the vanillafudge.com website, too. That's where I first saw that love and uh, musical celebration. Right. So, um, one last question, just out of the blue. Now, I know his brother pronounces it one way. Is it Carmen Apice or Carmen Apache? How do you pronounce it, <laughs> Vince? Well, he likes to be Apice at okay. this point. So, all right, that's yeah. So that's the way we're going to go with it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Thank we've been, you. Oh my gosh, great group, Vanilla Fudge. My gosh, you guys yeah. together are just um, musical heaven. Uh, I want to thank. You. I want to thank the great Vince Martel, uh, not only for his music, but um, for all the great work he does for our veter veterans. And like I said at the top, Vince, thank you so much for your service as a U.S. Navy veteran. Um, just all the great music you've given us, all the great vibes you've given us. It's I'm a first-generation Villa Fudge fan, and to get the opportunity to speak with you, um, it's it's just a thrill for me. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Well, Steve, thank you for having me on again, and uh, thank you for everybody at the station, and uh, thanks to uh, the, uh, uh, our veterans, especially keeping uh, the USA free and strong, and everybody support the veterans, uh, and uh, we should be uh, talking about that in the schools and having them in to talk. Uh, I'm just, uh, I can't, can't say enough to the veterans for what they've given us our freedom. I had a lot of relatives in World War II myself, so thanks to your dad for his service, too. Oh, I'll, I'll God bless him. Uh, we're going we're gonna to finish up with a song from Endless High called Just a Little. And once again, Vince, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. My pleasure. God bless everybody in the USA. Thank you. Bye for now, Vince. Thank you.